What's up YouTube, Jamie the Kid Zero Zero here, coming back to you with my um, Insector deck profile. Uh, this is going to be version 2.0 of my Insectors, after much testing, after playing this at a locals, and just generally finding out what I like and dislike about the deck, I've managed to refine it, rebuild it, kind of make some changes, and uh, well, I'm here to talk to you about it really. Uh, so I'm literally going to go through this like any other deck profile and kind of talk about it, just do what I usually do to be fair. So this is my Insector profile. Let's get on to it. Uh, of course, I'm still running the Essential Engine, which is <coughs> Centipede. Then uh, three Dragonfly. Um, I'm running two Hornet at the moment because uh, I only have two, and the deck really isn't hurt by having two. I've put in a Foolish Burial to allow me to A, modify the Grave for things like Dark Arm Dragon, and B, give me easier access to this. So it's really just like running three. So, I mean, unless someone's citing Crow, which a lot of people haven't really been doing, Against this deck anyway, I'm pretty safe foolishing in the uh, foolishing these, and then of course I'm running the one Gigamantis, which I'm still proxying because it hasn't arrived in the mail yet. Uh, so I'm still running the Essential Insector engine. It's just there's something about three Hornets that I don't like, and I mean I don't have an extra one, so if I have three, maybe maybe uh, I took Birdman as I explained before down to one because two was getting cloggy when I needed other things. I still consider going to two, but uh, at the moment it's in testing. I might bring this back up to two. I probably will, but it's finding room. This is the tricks. This is 41 cards. It's 23 monsters already. I run the Torguide engine over the Armageddon engine because the Armageddon engine is still way too slow. Uh, my third Torguide arrived, and it, it, as being me, it had to be a German one, so I finally got my actual playset of Torguides. Really pleased with that. I took out Tor Bus and I'm just running Sangan now. I might consider putting Bus back in because I like having the extra Tor Guide target in case I get Valid and things like that. But as of yet, this is and in case I make Birdman plays and things like that. But at the moment, this is uh, this is all I'm running. Sangan is essential for this deck, really. So you really have to run it. So I should probably mention now I took out the D Fissures because they I found they really did hurt this Sangan. And drawing more than one of them in your opening hand or consecutively really hurts. I played one game where I drew three in a row, and then in the next round r drew two in a row. And it lost me those games, so I took the fissures out. Uh, because I don't run any continuous anymore, I put I put the gauze in because gauze is another win condition in of himself. Dark armed, you just got to run it in this deck because this deck is so crazy with dark armed. You always it always seems to be live just conveniently. I don't know how, but. And then of course I'm running the BLS because I've even upped the light count the light count from last time. Um, I play two Veilers now. I'd even consider bumping up to a third, um, but I mean because I'm getting another ultimate through in a trade, which is awesome because I love it an ultimate. Um, Veiler at the moment is the absolute nuts in the format. It's absolutely brilliant in the mirror match. This is killer in the mirror match because it really does stop the um, stop Insector players dead. That's why I'm still siding Fissures, because it kills these. Um, it kills wind-ups, it stops the loop, if you know how I know when to Valor it, which is, you know, I pretty much know when to Valor it. So, not much else I can say on Valors, but still absolutely awesome card. I'd definitely run it at three if I had the third one still. So, we'll see what happens. And these two are Maxis. I'm still trying to get one more, so if you've got a Maxi for trade, let me know. But um, two maxis was okay for me. I didn't like three, mainly because of my locals meta. I might bump, bump up to three or side a third at um, Battle of the Kingdoms, which is coming up, which is a UK-based tournament. Apparently, I've never been to one. But, I mean, this is an awesome card at the moment after testing, and I really am glad that I at least have the one. So if anyone has any for, any of these for trades, please let me know, because I'm trying to get a hold of them. I will trade, like, over the value of them. So check out my trade binder, make me offers if you can, because I'm really looking for these. Like I will gladly trade you, you know, over the value of Maxi for it. Um otherwise I'm running two Thunder Kings for the rest of the light count because I absolutely love these cards. They're just absolutely nuts. And they really do shut out the meta. And they kind of you don't see them coming in as actors, you really don't. And this is an opening opening play, which I seem to open a lot, is absolutely awesome. I'm possibly considering a third, but as I said, this is 23 monsters as is, so I really shouldn't have any more. Uh, that's it for monsters. Onto the spell lineup. I run the compulsory reborn, dark hole, heavy storm, mind control. A lot of insector players don't run mind control, but then again, a lot of them don't run birdman. 
I really like this card. It gets me around a lot of things. So I definitely wouldn't take it out. Book of Moon. Well, because main, main, mainly because it is like another Book of Moon. Uh, book. MST's. Uh, Foolish. Because Foolish lets you get to your Hornet plays a lot faster. By the way, these MST's are amazing at killing the Shadow Mirrors and Necro Valleys that plague the stack. I uh, want a lure because the lure is amazing and I'm glad you can play it in the stack and it makes levy air plays absolutely horrendous. Gold sarcophagus for the same reason it makes levy air plays absolutely ridiculous. Gets you into your hornets way far, your hop, um, dragonflies way faster, things like that. Uh, two pot of avarice. For those of you who actually listen to my voice, these are pots of avarice because people will say, why is there pot of greed in your deck? Uh, these are proxies because my girlfriend is using all my sorry um, duality duality. These are pots of duality. Uh, because my girlfriend is using my dualities at the moment in her evil deck, so I'm out of dualities. So again, I'm trying to pick some up. If anyone has any secret dualities going, by the way, I'd be eager to get those off you. Uh, again, I'd probably value them at 25, 230, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, two dualities. I'm still try. I'm still trying Avarice, but I really would consider taking it out at the moment because I never really get to five cards. But it's alright, it needs more testing, we'll see what happens next locals. I'm running for traps, one torrential tribute, one mirror force, the two solemn warnings, and a solemn judgement. Just the compulsory trap lineup. Uh, I don't have Phoenix chains, uh, and in this deck I don't really like them. I like to get into my insectors as fast as possible, so I'm happy with the trap lineup like that. Uh, otherwise, for... oh, here, do the extra first, not the side. For the extra, I'm still running the Exa Beetle because it's a good option. I really like it because it sends, does some crazy stuff to things like Zen, my Zen Mains and stuff like that. I'm running the one Zen Main still because Zen Mains is Zen Mains. I don't like two. I think two is too much. So just sticking with a one. It means I don't have to trade out for another one. <laughs> uh, I'm running one Leviathan Dragon because Leviathan Dragon is always just handy to have like Stardust used to be and things like that. Uh, Leviers, I'm running two of them because I can abuse it with Torguide plays, as I told you in my tournament diary and made that mad play. Uh, Giga Brilliant because it gives me a light for um, BLS, things like that. Just a really awesome card to have. I don't know why, but it's just handy in a pinch. And then for my rank fours, because I never make them, I'm running a Utopia just because I can. Um, for the Synchros, because I run tuners, yes I do. Some people say I don't. Uh, Catastor. Hyper Librarian for killing Catastors, and in case I make a mad play, you know, maybe. Um, uh, Brianak, Underground Arachnid, which is absolutely nutty. I want this in secret, so if anyone's got a secret one, let me know. Uh, Black Rose, Stardust, Brianak, sorry, Trishula, not Brianak. And uh, Mistworm, this Mistworm's probably going to come out for a Locomotion Argenix when I get one. My girlfriend sneakily bought me one for Valentine's Day, which is awesome. So... I mean, among other things, she's not that cheap, but Locomotion Argenix is still a nutty card, and Trishula you got to run, just Trishula, and this deck gets lots of level 3s out. Uh, that has been it for the actual deck. Um, here's the kind of side deck I'm playing around with. Uh, I need your opinion on this. King Tiger Wangu, I'm consider running, considering running for the mirror match, because this thing absolutely slaughters Insectors itself. And if you can play this right, because I run things like Thunder King and big stuff, Stuff that actually can be summoned around this guy. Um, I'm just really liking playing it. I, I liked it in the mirror match. I really did. So, I mean, guys, tell me what you think on this. Tell me whether I should play it or whether I should take it out. Because I want this as my really unexpected thing for the mirror. And I mean, no one knows me as a pro player, so no one's gonna sit down, or sit down opposite me and go, "Ah, you're, you're the Wangu guy." So, I'm safe telling you guys this. I run two crows because I never know what I could run into, and crow is just really useful, especially against like TG drain and stuff like that. Stop them actually getting into more TGs. Uh, as I said before, I've sided the three fissures. I didn't have sleeves for them, so this is just the three fissures. Uh, they're still awesome cards for killing hand traps, but at the moment I'm really saving them for the kind of paranoid players who have been playing kind of triple Valor, triple Maxi. So if I play against anyone who seems to be spamming Valor and spamming Maxi, I'll definitely side these in against them. So, I mean, it's all about reading my opponent, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm toying with, uh, you know, the extra MST, and also I'm thinking of playing two, du uh, two Dust Tornadoes. I couldn't find my Dust Tornadoes before this video, but two Dust Tornadoes definitely seems like the way to go in killing, like, um, the Mirror and things like that. 
Shadow Mirror absolutely ruins this deck, absolutely wrecks it. So you really need the back row removal for it. Uh, I'm running two chain discs because chain discs is the nuts. Um, it's just absolutely amazing. It kills in the mirror match, kills and things like that. In the mirror match, it makes it really, really awesome because if you can chain disc your opponent's dragonflies, it basically gives you access to six dragonflies. So you can get into, your, excuse me, you can get into your tour guide and go into Levier. You have access to their dragonflies, which is awesome. Uh, I'm citing the triple decree still for Rogue and for shutting down the mirror, um, the Shadow Mirror, because Shadow Mirror, I can't get over how horrible Shadow Mirror is to this deck, so I have to, I have to lock it out. And these, as I said, were awesome in, uh, my game against Black Wings and things like that, so I just can't really play without these. So they're awesome to have. And siding out all my traps gives me, like, loads of room to play with for other siding. And otherwise, I'm playing with siding Cyber Dragons and a Chimera Tech Fortress, because I know this isn't... 15 cards um, I'm playing with Chimera Tech Fortress because I really like the fact that it's really useful against windups in that Zen Mai and Zen Mains are both machines and dropping this against them is kind of unexpected and it's really nuts if you can drop this and go into stuff off of their monsters off of their quite big monsters as well well quite boss monsters uh, but yeah guys I don't really have that much else to say uh, this has been my insector deck profile oh by the way this is my uh, this is another one of my mats that I can add to my hoard this is the Nordic world championship qualifier mat I managed to get off eBay for 17 pounds which is quite good but otherwise guys yeah this has been Jamie the kid with my second insector deck profile as per usual like comment and subscribe for me pretty please and uh, let me know what you thought otherwise I'll see you guys in the comment box below have a good one and also remember Duality secret, underground arachnid secret, maxis. If you've got any of them, trade me them. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you later.